Welcome to Electro Online, and here's a little more challenging problem for an acid based titration problem. So, let's say we start out with 50 milliliters of a 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid. In this case, we know what the concentration is of the original solution, and we're going to add 20 milliliters of 0.68 molar uh, potassium hydroxide. And I guess I don't have to write the of there. All right. And so the questions are, follows, what was the original pH of the solution we started with and what is the final pH of the solution we started with? For example, will we have reached the, what we call neutralization point or will it still be acidic in, uh, of a solution or maybe we went past the equilibrium point or the neutralization point and now it has become a basic solution. So let's find out. Well, first of all, let's, let's figure out the pH of that and the, the the equation for pH is pH is equal to the negative of the log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion in the solution. So in this case, since it's 0.5 molar, the concentration would be uh, uh, 0.5 moles per liter. And so this is equal to minus the log of 0 0.5, which is equal to, and of course for that we need a calculator. So 0.5, take the log of that and uh, that would be minus 0.3 and with the minus that would be 0 0.3 so the original pH of the solution and let's call it pH initial like that is 0 0.3 okay so what will it be when we add 20 milliliters of 0.68 molar potassium hydroxide to figure out what the final concentration of the hydrogen ion will be in here Let's figure out how much hydrogen, how many hydrogen ions we had in there in the first place. So let's say the number of, uh, or the number of moles of hydrogen ions is equal to, well, we take the molarity of that solution. So we take the, that's equal to the molarity of the hydrochloric acid times the volume of the hydrochloric acid. And that will give us the number of moles of the hydrogen ion, excess hydrogen ion. So, because of course, in a solution like this, all of the hydrogen ions will be released in solution when you put hydrochloric acid in water like that. So the molarity of the hydrochloric acid, that's equal to 0 0.5 moles per liter, and we have to multiply that times the volume, which is 50 milliliters. But in this case, we want to make sure that the units match, so we have to convert 50 milliliters into liters, and so that's 0 0.050 liters. And let's see, if we multiply that, we get 0.5 times 0.05, which is 0.025 moles. So that is the number of moles of hydrogen ions that are in the solution. Now, how many moles of hydroxide ions are we adding? So the number of moles of the hydroxide ions that we're adding by adding potassium hydroxide, that's equal to the molarity of the potassium hydroxide times the volume of the potassium hydroxide. So the molarity was 0 0.68 moles per liter times the volume, and again we have to convert that to liters, which is equal to, so point, 0.68 times 0.02, this is equal to 0.0136 moles. And that would be of the hydrogen ion, and this would be of the hydroxide ions. Okay, so you can see that when you add the potass potassium hydroxide, you're adding less or fewer hydroxide ions than the number of hydrogen ions that were already present in solution. So whatever you're adding of the hydroxide ion, that will cancel out an equivalent amount of the hydrogen ions because they will combine and form water, and the leftover will remain as hydrogen ions. Since there's more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions, the final solution will still be acidic, and so let's find out what the concentration will be, and therefore the pH of that final solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this from that, so the remainder will be this minus this, because however many there are of hydroxide ions, those will cancel out the hydro hydrogen ions, and the leftover will still be hydrogen ions. So we have uh, 0 0.025 minus that, that gives us the remainder equals 0 0.0114 moles of hydrogen ions. All right, now that we know the, no, not the concentration, but the number of hydrogen ions that are in solution, now we need to find the molarity 
of that solution. And the molarity, by definition, is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume, because it's going to be moles per liter. And so how many moles do we have of the hydrogen ion? We have 0.0114 moles of hydrogen ions, and we have the divided by the volume of the final solution. Now the final solution will have a volume of 50 milliliters plus 20 milliliters, so a total of 70 milliliters. And of course we have to convert that to liters, so this is equal to 0.0114 moles per 0.070 liters. So now we have the concentration of course, we need the calculator to figure that out. So we have 0.0114 divided by 0 0.07. And so it gives us a concentration. The molarity of the new solution is equal to 0 0.163 moles per liter. That will be the concentration of the hydrogen ions in the final solution. And then we can, of course, figure out the pH of that. So the pH final is equal to minus the log of the new concentration of the hydrogen ions, and that will be equal to minus the log of 0 0.163, and let's see what that is equal to. Take the log of that, put a negative in front of that, so the new pH will be 0 0.79. All right, so we start out with a pH of 0.3, and we end up at a pH of 0.79. So notice that after we added 20 milliliters of 0.68 molar of potassium hydroxide, the pH barely budged. It went from 0.3 to 0.79 because we're still a far, long ways away from the neutralization point, and so there'll be a small change in the pH. But remember, even though you figured out what the final number of moles was of the hydrogen ion, you now have to calculate the concentration of the new solution, which now has 70 milliliters of a combination of potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, and the total volume is 70 milliliters, the number of moles of hydrogen ion is 0.0114, gives you the new concentration, which you then use to find the final pH, and that's how we do that.